The path you take to finding your inner bookkeeper is going to pass through a few zones. The first zone is going to be the discomfort zone. We've talked about it before. I talk about it all the time. I learned this with my family, my clients, my spouse, that the discomfort zone about money encompasses huge areas. It is not something that people want to do, like to do, care to do, and they put off doing it. So uh, this quest we're going to go on to find that inner bookkeeper, even on the simplest terms, um, some doing something that you don't want to do, it's always uncomfortable, but we're going to learn how to get comfortable with that discomfort because it's so important. So when I talk about the discomfort zone, I'm talking about the emotional triggers that we have that cause us to spend. Spend money we don't have, think for things we don't want, for things we don't need, or for things that we feel deprived of and we want them now. Sort of uh, like um, I want chocolate, so I run to the store, I get my chocolate, I eat my chocolate, and I go, oh, great. And you sit down and you say, now what? I still want chocolate. Money does that at a level that no other issue can do. Money is very, very difficult to deal with if you're uncomfortable with it. So I kind of created a chart, and I, I think you might be looking at it on and off during this video. It's called the discomfort zone, and it talks about emotional spending. And it, it addresses your triggers. And the triggers for emotional spending are, there's dozens, maybe hundreds of reasons that you spend emotionally. Boredom, anxiety, fear, upset, anger, lack of affection, um, uh, deep down longing, uh, emptiness, a feeling of emptiness, a feeling of confusion, a feeling of unhappiness, and maybe getting something will make you happy. and this emotional trigger causes you to do things that i i'm no i don't know it, it it makes you feel like you're you're not very smart it's like i don't have the knowledge to create a better uh world for myself with my money i don't know how to do this i don't know how to balance my checkbook i don't know how to deal with my credit cards i'm not understanding my credit reports and you go through this whole litany of things that you don't understand and so your lack of knowledge contributes to those triggers and it creates a fear of action. So you say, okay, I, I want this item, it's $550. I don't really have room on my credit card. I really don't have money in my checking account. I don't have savings for it. My family you know, needs to put groceries and rent above this thing that I want. And then you feel compelled to go buy it. And then you have this fear of action afterward. Oh my goodness, I did the wrong thing. Now how, how can I fix it? And then you feel stuck right in the middle of a uh, quicksand. You feel like you're sinking. So it's a trigger and you have a fear of action to fix that trigger and you don't feel you have the knowledge to fix that trigger. The trigger is the place that we have to, we have to concentrate on that. What is it about this this trigger that you don't understand where does it come from pretty much we have to like roll back in time to our childhoods our early teen years what was going on in our family what was going on with our friends what was happening in our life that made us feel this way about money what kind of discussions did we have what kind of discussions did we not have in fact not having discussions about money at least not having the slow calm simple intelligent discussions about money uh really harm us the ones that we have uh well you what do you think money grows on trees well when i was little i actually said well no i don't think they grow on trees you know i, I was uh, four years old going uh money grows on trees why would you even say that to me i don't think so i've never seen one and uh you know it goes on and on from there silliness that we learned as kids the silence we lived through as uh teenagers and then the crippling anxiety of being a young adult on our own and then actually being an adult with a family and not knowing where to turn for the next bit of money you need so it's it's a really big cycle so now that we're in this discomfort zone and we're going to talk about the discomfort zone and you're going to look at what makes up that discomfort zone and it probably applies to a lot of areas of your life we're going to concentrate on 
cash and money management, but it probably goes to a lot of areas. We're going to look at what can bring you to your comfort zone. And um, a good friend of mine uh, called it EQ plus IQ equals FQ. And it's uh, sort of a funny little equation that we came up with because I work with a professional about EQ, which is your emotional quotient, your emotional intelligence. How emotionally intelligent are you to handle all these things that are thrown at you every day? IQ, and as we know, IQ uh, used to be tested in such a weird way that it wasn't even valid. But IQ is really, what's what's your logical side? What is your logical side telling you about what you're doing? So you have this emotional response, and then you have this silly logic that comes in and says no. And the, in the old days, they used to have like a devil on a shoulder and an angel on one, and they'd say, okay, no, do it. No, don't do it. You know, we'd have all this conflict in our life. And I mean, it was just a simple way of telling you that you every day have an emotional conflict with your logical side. And so if you combine the two and you have a strong emotional um, intelligence and you use your logic, you will end up with a financial intelligence that will really overwhelm you. You'll say, wow, why didn't I think of that before? So think of it in terms of EQ plus IQ equals FQ. Emotional stability plus using your logic equals financial stability. And we talk about what are the things that can replace your triggers? Well, budgets and tracking and um, dedication, acceptance, pro action. You think about it. If you have this emotional trigger and then you say, oh, but I have my budget to go look at. Oh, I have this emotional trigger. I want to go do this, this spending, or I want, I want to take my family somewhere. And you said, wait a minute, I've been tracking my money. I'm not sure that it's there. Let me be proactive and see if we have any funds for this. Do you understand that turning that around from a negative to a positive changes your life drastically? So then you get knowledge and you say, okay, I'm going to go find the, the answers for what I need to feel more emotionally stable about my money and make better logical decisions. And then you then take that, and I'm sure you're looking at the diagram, you then move that to action. You actually connect with things. You proactively get the answers you need. You review things. You sit down and you itemize and you say, uh, what did I do? I don't understand this. You check on your bank, you check on your credit cards, you do things that are so proactive that at the end of the day, you don't have any of that worry and fear anymore because you've actually orchestrated the day you're in. You woke up in the morning, you had a plan, you lived your plan, you handled some of the things that were thrown on you. At the end of the day, you evaluated your day, and then and then you felt peace of mind. You said when you fell asleep, you said, "I did a good job with this day. I'm going to do that tomorrow." Think about if you applied that to many places in your world, but mostly apply it to the money. Take care of the money and other things will fall into place. Always kind of follow the money situation, your money situation, your emotional response to it, your practical response to it, and the growth around learning those things. Tap into that inner bookkeeper. We all have one. Stop thinking that this is not your strength. It is your strength. Actually, if you're getting up every day and supporting yourself or working with people and, and getting things done, you are a success. I don't care if you're making $10 an hour or $150,000 a year. If you are really involved in the decisions you're making and you're making the best decisions you can, you are a success. So my whole mission in life is to move from the discomfort zone and why we get stuck there into the comfort zone and how we can keep that area really comfortable. Tap into your inner bookkeeper and actually make a lot of changes. They may be small changes, but you won't believe how much they help you. That is our mission. This is our goal. And I'm hoping that this diagram just brings to light some of the things you need, want, um, maybe not doing, or maybe you've started doing them and you just need encouragement. I'm here to walk that journey with you. So welcome to the discomfort zone. And then we're going to move right out of it into the comfort zone. We're going to learn how to be comfortable with our money.
Thanks.